There are so many courses going on at TESS. These online courses include Madhya Pradesh set, Uttarakhand set, CUET entrance exam, then there is Karnataka set, and of course, the main net exam. Preparation for these is full on. The entire team of TESS is working day and night, let me tell you, yes, because we actually take the past year question papers, we try to build a course around them, and it is fun along with that, a lot of responsibility, yes? Now, if you feel you want to join our online courses, you can contact us right now on the number 93878-39871. And of course, there is a net model test series, which means you'll get only question answers, which will help you to prepare better, okay? So you can choose right now. And today's capsule is the remains of the day. You know who has written this novel? Of course you do. It is Kazuo Ishiguro, the man on the screen. Well, The Remains of the Day was published in 1989 and it won the Man Booker Prize in the same year. Kazuo Ishiguro was born in Japan, but he moved to England at an early age. He was born in the year 1954. About The Remains of the Day, the theme of this novel are class difference, how there is aristocracy and then there is the lower class. How the lower served the upper during that time. World War II, loyalty, regret. And the narration is first person because there is a butler with the name Stevens. He tells the story of his past. He is the narrator. He actually reminisces. You know, believe me, the entire story, what I felt after reading it is, even if something is happening with him at present, he thinks about it and tells us in the novel. Okay, so shall we start kare the summary of the remains of the day? Stevens, the butler, is preparing to take a road trip through the English countryside on the insistence of his new employer, an American named Mr. Faraday. This might be his first holiday in over 30 years. He works at the Darlington Estate. Before Mr. Faraday, Stephen served an English aristocrat, the late Lord Darlington. First hesitant, Stephen finally decides that yes, he will take the trip. It will give him the chance to pay a visit to Miss Kenton. Now, who is Miss Kenton? She used to be the Darlington Hall's housekeeper, but she left her job and married Mr. Ben. So did you understand till here? Ye jo butler hai Stephen, inke jo nai employer hai Mr. Faraday, wo keh rahe ki kya tum itne saalo se is estate mein kaam kar rahe ho bina chutti ke jao jao abhi chutti leo take my car go and Stephen is like I've never taken an off you know his past employer Lord Darlington unke ghar mein itni meetings hoti thi he was an aristocrat an important person people used to come and go and pura service ka responsibility was on Stevens okay but then he agrees because he wants to meet Miss Kenton, okay? Now, on his first day of travel, Stevens appreciates the English scenery. He also reflects on what it means to be a great butler. For example, just like his father, Stephen Sr., who embodied the dignity of the butler profession. Now, the next day of Stephen's travel, Stevens wonders whether or not Miss Kenton, who after marriage is addressed as Mrs. Ben, will actually agree to return to Darlington Estate. Now, why does Stevens think that Miss Kenton will return to Darlington Estate? Because he recently received letters from her in which she seemed unhappy about her marriage. And also, she was very useful to the estate. He actually first met Miss Kenton in the year 1922, and she immediately proved to be very headstrong, very determined, okay, in her profession. She was very efficient, basically. Yes? Now, after this, Stevens is on the road trip. He is remembering. He is remembering things. So, he remembers a night when he maintained his dignity and duty as a butler to Lord Darlington. Listen to this story. How did he maintain his dignity? Lord Darlington and his friend, Sir David Cardinal, invited a number of important people to Darlington Hall. 
in an attempt to ease sanctions against Germany after World War I. This was an unofficial meeting, okay? And the important guests were M. Dupont from France and an American senator named Mr. Lewis. But things did not go as Lord Darlington expected. Now, around this conference, Stephen Sr., that is the papa of Stephen, became severely ill. And they lived in the same house, obviously. So Stephen Sr. lived up while the estate was down. But Stephen's help was so needed downstairs that he barely spent time with his ailing father, leaving Miss Kenton to care for him. Did you understand? He kept his profession above his family. That is what he is trying to remember here. Shortly after this, his father died. Stevens was shaken and he came close to crying, but he quickly resumed his duty solemnly. Now Stevens thinks about the importance he always gave to his late employer. And he does not regret it. Let me tell you guys, he's not regretting it because he feels that aristocracy needs to be given respect. He agrees to the, you know, the society system that has been created. Now, the next day of Stevens travel, he is sitting at a tea room in Taunton. Taunton, you know, is a town in England. And he thinks about accusations against Lord Darlington after the war especially accusations of anti-Semitism, that how Lord Darlington became against Jews. But Stephen still considers his master as morally upright. Up in sabse kya samaj rahe that Stevens literally looks at Lord Darlington as a father figure, as a godly figure, right? Understand this here. Now, Stephen's car runs out of gas. The Taylor family in a village was kind enough to invite him to stay the night. Here in their house, his thoughts wander to the evening meetings. He regularly held with Miss Kenton in her parlor. Parlor basically is in her room. They drank cocoa together. But those meetings came to an end. Okay. Why did those meetings that Stevens and Miss Kenton had came to an end? Why? There are a few reasons. First, Miss Kenton once saw him reading a sentimental love story and teased him about it. So Stevens immediately grew cold. Second, she began to receive letters and visit a suitor in the nearby town. Basically, you know, she made a boyfriend around this time. And third, once she asked Stevens if he would ever want anything else in life, to which Stevens replied that he only wishes to see Lord Darlington achieve his goals. Hearing this, Miss Kenton became distant towards him, but he never insisted on asking her why. Did you understand? You know, let me tell you, Stevens and Miss Kenton definitely liked each other. Stevens did not come ahead and say this. Kenton tried a lot that Stevens should propose her, but Kenton maintained the dignity of his profession. As I told you, Kenton was a butler, only a butler, a fantastic butler, because he wanted to be that, okay? Now, if you present at the village where he is staying, people get attracted to Stephen's gentlemanly manners. He discusses things with them, and he also tells the villagers that ordinary people should not keep strong opinions. Politics should be the realm of aristocratic gentlemen only. Are you understanding his mindset? Yes. Now, the next day of his travel is the most important because he has a meeting with Miss Kenton after so many years in a hotel called as Rose Garden Hotel. Now, I will tell you about the meeting between Stevens and Miss Kenton. Listen carefully what happens. After exchanging their hellos, hi, hi, Mrs. Ben, hi, Stevens, how are you? Both of them become comfortable and began reminiscing about their days together at Darlington Hall. They discussed Lord Darlington's ruined post-war repetition, and Stevens tells her that Lord Darlington's final days were solitary and silent, and it was tragic. After talking, eating together, he drove her to the bus station, and he you know, got the courage to ask her whether she was happy with her husband. To this Miss Kenton or Mrs. Ben replied honestly. She said that I married just to annoy you, Stevens. 
believe me, I did not want to marry, but I wanted to annoy you. That is why I got married. But over these years, I have come to love my husband. And I don't think I can literally live only in the past. I know I have to move on. When Stevens hears this, his heart breaks. But again, this man keeps calm and cheerfully he bids her goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Now, again, the current day, Stevens thinks back to a discussion he had with a man on the bench in the town of Weymouth. Basically, he's traveling around England, as I told you. So he's now at Weymouth, a town, and he was sitting on the beach side on a bench. He met a man and he discussed something with it. Kya discussion hua? Listen to this. This man was a retired butler. Since he was a butler, Stevens could open his heart to him. Stevens told him about the Darlington Hall. He confesses that he has begun to make more errors at work, which means he was very perfect then. But now, because of his age, because of his mental state, he's not able, able to concentrate more on work. And after this, Stevens begins to cry. But the man, the retired butler, comforted him. He told him to keep looking forward, to keep looking at the remains of the day. Understood? Novel ka naam. Keep looking forward. Keep looking to the remains of the day. Do not look at the past. Galti ki? Okay. Today, the remains of the day, that will be the best. So Stevens now reflects that what that retired butler said is right. All that he can do is to put his fate in the hands of the great gentleman he serves. First, Lord Darlington, and now Mr. Faraday. And we are done. That is what the remains of the day is all about. Isn't it easy? And I hope I made it super fun. Easy for you. Let me tell you. Easy, okay? You should really remember what we spoke around this time. Yes? Thank you so much. This is Hina from Team Test. Keep coming to our channel and of course subscribe to it if you haven't and share it with your friends and relatives. Bye.